Welcome everybody and today I'm very much enthusiastic and excited to introduce you to a wonderful person. Before that, I'm going to tell what this show is about. This show is about a book called Lessons of Icarus and the Pursuit of Happiness by our renowned author William R. Fowler III. And we have with us, we have the privilege of uh, talking to this wonderful person who's going to talk about, who's going to talk all about uh, uh, the lessons of Icarus and the Pursuit of Happiness and a little bit about his upcoming book as well, The Doors to Possibility. So we'll find out more about Randy, as I call him, uh, a wonderful friend of mine, a great association since uh, long years. And we'll find about uh, this wonderful personality and we'll talk more about this lovely book called, again, as I say, The Lessons of Icarus and the Pursuit of Happiness. So let's welcome our wonderful author and my friend, William R. Fowler III. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much, Sarah. Wonderful. I'm excited wonderful. for the show. Absolutely. Uh, so finally, we are here. Finally, we are having a conversation. And finally, we are actually talking to the audience and spilling the beans about uh, the lessons of Icarus and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, so we'll dig deeper into the book. But first, our audience would love to know a little bit about yourself. Uh, I gave a formal introduction, but let's go a little informal. Let's find out who actually is Randy, uh, as I call him. So Randy, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself, a little bit about uh, your childhood, you know, how uh, your childhood was and uh, how did you actually, you know, continue your life and what prompted you to write The Lessons of Icarus? Well, it's a long story, but I'll make it pretty short, I think. I had grown up with a series of family structures and events where there was a high expectation of success level. You know, you're going to do well. You're going to try hard and all that. So that was my upbringing. And we saw various successes and failures at that, as we see every day in the world. But in, my problem is I actually have a, a mental disorder called bipolar disease, a bipolar disorder, which you've no doubt heard of before. But I didn't know I had it. So what happens when you have a manic episode as a bipolar person and you don't know it, you basically make a big mess of your life. It affects your judgment. You know, you start putting out fires because you're going too fast. You can't go back and fix yesterday. And all, you know, all of a sudden you get this feedback loop, keyword there, feedback loop of nonsense. Okay. So I wound up <laughs> I hospitalized. I, I wound up actually hospitalized with a severe nervous breakdown. The real thing. I was in the hatch where is a terrible place for a sick person. I can guarantee you that the screaming, the wailing it was horrible. It was there for three weeks and I got back out and I said to myself, what happened? And I took three years to figure out not only how I had gotten there, but how I was going to survive getting back. And for three years, as I practiced and honed my understanding of how to actualize, how to do it. I stumbled on how to do it from all the reading I've done, as you could do, you know, Seeds of Greatness, uh, Think Grow Rich, lots of great books out there. I grew up on all that stuff, but I came at it with a slightly different angle as well. And that is, I'm looking for an entire philosophy of happiness rather than here's how to make a million dollars, okay? You make a million dollars, then what? Okay, you're not going to be satisfied. <laughs> I right. admit it. We've seen human behavior, we cannot deny. We are always striving for more than we can have. It's natural. We shouldn't fight it. But what we should do is learn how to direct it. Okay? That's the issue. It's not to let it go in all directions, anywhere here and there, but to focus it forward on what's going to be the best thing for you and your family and your friends and the country and the world all at the same time. And you're going to be happy about it. Wonderful, that's, the, wonderful. that's where I'm coming from. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I love you know I love uh, you know pushing those uh, buttons. You know, I just want Randy to speak about you know the wealth of knowledge he has inside and uh, the wisdom he carries around him like an aura. Uh, so we'll go deep into uh, the discussions. But first, thank you for letting our audience know a little bit about yourself. And when 
and we'll deepen the discussion with uh, the questions I'm going to ask you. Uh, but uh, but before that, uh, tell about you know the anxiety episodes because uh, you know people are anxiety stricken uh, these days. Before I go to all the deep questions uh, and the lessons of Icarus, uh, uh, as it is the crux of our discussion, uh, you know, you spoke about anxiety. You said that you were hospitalized. You weren't well uh, mentally and physically. Uh, how was that state? You know, and you know, how did you spring out victorious on the other side, uh, even before you wrote uh, the lessons of Icarus? The lessons of Icarus is, in fact, a warning in itself. That's why the book had to be written, because if anyone else stumbles upon these tools, they are far too powerful for an uninitiated person to deal with. This book explains how it works, but also applies wisdom to make sure that you don't do yourself harm, as I did the first time. I thought I was so smart that I could change the world, and I did but the world didn't necessarily like it, okay? And people started looking at me funny. You got crazy. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Bad. awesome. So, so, so I had to climb back out of that. And again, I said to myself, after it was all over and I got out of the hospital, I said, what happened? How did my life just go berserk like that? What happened? And it took three years to write it down and think it through and encompass not only what, the good parts are that drove me to that level, but also the wisdom to learn a lesson to make sure you don't do it in a self-harm kind of way. So the book is a, not only a puzzle, it's a warning that if you're going to play with these tools, make sure that you're thinking about it clearly about what you're creating because it's your responsibility. There's no escaping it. Wonderful. And uh, so... So, so, so I know that uh, anxiety played a big role in your life because yes. of bipolar disorder and yes. um, so many. Well, let's talk about what anxiety is. Anxiety is a form of stress, you could say. It's almost like stress, but it's a little bit different. Anxiety is when we don't know why we're afraid. And it's important to understand that. If you have anxiety, you're feeling uncomfortable and anxious. You know that, but you don't know why. I challenge you to tell me why, because all it is is a myriad of your experiences and projections in your mind and the chaos that happens in your mind when you allow it. Don't allow chaos in your mind anymore. Learn how to hone your direction. Learn how to apply your skills in the here and now to maximize the possibility of the tomorrow that you want to envision. That's the nature of it. But again, it's a, it's, it's a warning. I've never really come out and admitted that to anyone. But the book really was written as a warning. If you go in and play with these tools, beware. Be, be cautious and careful. Is it the warning to change or is it a warning that you may imperil your life at any moment? You may imperil your sanity. You may imperil your life, not your life so much, but your state of mind. And that's what we're, what's all we're talking about here. Is The book says the main tenet of the book is you need to learn how to achieve and maintain what I call a desirable, whatever that means, a desirable state of mind. Now, I'm saying you tell me what that state of mind is, and I'll tell you how to get there. That's the nature of it. I don't want to define your happiness. I want you to. But then when you get it, I want you to remember that you got it because you earned it, not because it fell in your lap. Not because of good luck or coincidence, <laughs> all right? It's because you earned it and you should be happy. When we right. make an impact we'll, on the we'll, world, we'll talk about all those possibilities of you know uh, <laughs> these these ideas, these ideas, these thoughts are coming to my mind about you know what about the person who won the lottery? What about the person you know who be, who became a billionaire overnight uh, through serendipity? Is he happy? Or or he happy? Or he married a, a you know a, you know a uh, rich woman and he was turned out a billionaire overnight but uh, but because this show is going to revolve is revolving around your book i want you to show my audience you know the book the lessons of icarus and the pursuit of happiness you know you know i want them to see the cover you know uh, what a beautiful i mean it gives me such a uh, pleasing uh, 
state of mind and the pursuit of happiness you know i remember the movie the pursuit of happiness you know where will smith and his son you know they they, they go through some uh, you know they they go through a drill toward life actually so but um, you know i th- i think this is the central core of everybody uh, the pursuit of happiness in some form or the other um, and and as i as i told you uh, this has become elusive people now in this flood uh, or the upheaval of uh, social media and a lot of data overload Sorry. and and uh, you know so much of information around uh you know people i mean I, i mean i feel that you know anxiety has become in a common place it has become second nature to everybody and the pursuit of happiness is like a chase a never ending chase and and i feel that you know i mean i feel you know i i read your book it is a wonderful read and as you said it has i mean you, uh, one has to read it multiple times to actually not really uh, superficially understand uh the grammar and the vocabulary and the words but something really deep uh the liquid gold inside uh which is uh, not elusive but you have to pay attention i mean it seeks practice i mean i mean i i've, I've seen i've uh, i read uh, uh your words that you know it takes practice it takes discipline it takes a uh, dedication also we'll go a little deeper into that uh we understood what is the truth about anxiety uh you know uh, which is the first chapter about uh first chapter of the lessons of icarus uh and then uh, we want to go a little deeper uh, deeper into uh, different concepts on why we will go back and forth because i'm really intrigued uh by this book uh you know one one thing it talks about is a desired state of mind that desirable state of mind and then exactly. it talks about living in the now uh at at some point it was uh, talking about uh uh chaos theory and it was talking about the observer effect and then you you have you have put out you have laid out five beautiful lessons uh for all of us to implement understand imbibe uh in our daily living uh first start first let's start because this is the ongoing thing in everybody's life that they want to achieve their dreams achieve become successful in life become happy and sometimes they are at a crossroads sometimes people are even going astray uh and yes. trying to find out the meaning of their life and i just i saw that uh in one of the pages that existentialism is going to uh directly explain what is the meaning of life if we have lost it and i feel that at least 95% of us i'm um, i'm going to include myself have lost it uh let us i mean uh, please tell us uh, one uh, how do you approach reading this book and two how do you achieve your dreams rather and what is your take on achieving your dreams is it a permanent success or it is or is it an ongoing journey of sorts it's an ongoing journey and i caution in the book it's only fair to say that your dreams may need to be adjusted based on changes in the world and the environment you know if there's a stock market crash or interest rates are suddenly too high these are real facts you can't avoid right but that's not going to stop your dream that's going to cause you to refine it don't look at it as failure look at it as a way to refine by adjusting to what's going on around you don't stand in the way of things right things are moving they're always going to be moving don't get in the way of it ride it ride with it go with the flow it's always good advice amazing 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 will will go will we will go to will go back and forth uh towards things like again to anxiety stress and tension well let's uh, talk about anxiety anxiety is a form of stress where you don't know the cause of the of the bad feeling it's it's a it's a mystery right that's so important to understand because if you live in the now and you let go of all these projections of the future for a while give yourself a chance to calm down and recharge your sense of humor how about that you know plug into what's going on around you enjoy 
your house. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. Live it. And don't allow those crazy external fears and all that to invade. If you get that speaking in your mind, go back and read a, another page from the book. That's all it's for is to go back to if you need to, uh, to get you back on track, basically. All right. But so he's a terrible thing. Uh, we are in a constant tug of war. You know, the other day I was like feeling very, really, really sublime. I felt I was really calm and I had those gentle emotions. But the next moment, you know, some text message, you know, triggered me and I, you know, instantly I knew that I was in anxiety. At least I could identify what it was. So I, so, uh, so I understood that, you know, definitely it is, uh, it is a big player in everybody's lives. So thank you for How that you explanation. That time? Did you feel happy? Not at all. No, I mean, when anxiety went away. Absolutely. Yeah. It was like, the a, other day. yeah, it, it was like a burden taken off your chest. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a burden and it's self-imposed. That's the thing we have to look at. It's our fear. It's a manifestation, to use other popular terms, it's a manifestation of fear. And we deny it to ourselves. That's the problem. You have to open your eyes up and face the fact that it's normal to have fear, but not to let it ruin your goals. You can't let it hold you back. You need to control it. You need to come back on the other side of the argument. Give the devil's advocate a chance. Try a different perspective. Adapt. But don't give up, ever. Wonderful. I did write a quote that I thought would be kind of fun to insert here. The book, the bottom line of the book is in the following quote. The process of achieving and maintaining a desirable state of mind is what this book was designed to convey. In other words, the state of mind of happiness is what I'm trying to talk about. You need to read between the lines. It's not all laid out in black and white. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's a difficult concept, as we all know. What is happiness? I'll show you. Happiness is, is achieved by having an impact on your world, whether it's your friend, your family, your work, whatever it might be, having a positive impact and taking responsibility for it. That's a big part of it. You need to learn how to take responsibility for your own decisions and accept it. We make mistakes. So what are you going to do? You're going to learn from the mistakes or let it drive you down again? Get back up, right? You've heard these words before. My words are not totally unique, but what I'm trying to do is to create a whole philosophy around it. Another good example is the, the Japanese homes. Thinking about this here. The Japanese in, enhance their homes. You know, with the, the trays of sand and they have the little rakes that they rake through the sand or they have a little tea party, all this calm, quiet, resonant, harmonious activity. They're doing it to bring about the right state of mind. Wow, wow. I mean, that is... That's it. That's you know, it. That, you know, always had this thing, you know, I, I think at the heart of all hearts, you know, everybody, you know, whether they want to, uh, you know, Accumulate a pile of money or success of fame or it's the state name. of mind behind the money that you want. It's not the That's money you want, it's the state of mind that you think it's gonna give you. Am I wrong? Right, 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 right. Everyone so wants. you're saying I'm gonna get happiness when I get all this money. Okay, guess what? You get all the money and it doesn't work. That's my message to you. And I know that you already know it. You just don't want to believe it. You'd be you'd rather deal with that lie than face your own fears. And I'm gonna show you how to face your own fears. How do you, you how do you, you have I, mean, I, I know that uh, I, mean, I don't want to spill the beans. I want people to read the book uh, cover to cover and yes. uh, you know take notes uh, the way I yeah. did. I mean, uh, imbibe each word, uh, you, know, you know, rather religiously in its literal sense, uh, rather totally. And uh, I have my own questions as well after that. But but I felt you know. Uh, at times of uh, distress or at times of danger, I feel that some of the words, you know, you have that uh, fine, you have that fineness in writing. Uh, you actually, you know, you can actually visit someone's dream, you know, when they need uh, your advice, you know, something, it's like a, uh, 
I was about to say that it is, I mean, I feel Lessons of Icarus is more like a spiritual book where, you know, you know, you, uh, you know, it, it comes to you like a serendipity. The words come to you uh, like a serendipity when you need them. And I feel that that's the need to read this book, uh, you know, because, yeah. because my, uh, I mean, I, I read the book very sincerely and I felt, you know, I derived a lot of benefit and I, and I feel that uh, what I derived was only a tip of the iceberg. There's the whole chunk under uh, the water, that that big thing, uh, you know, beneath that uh, tip. Absolutely. It's a small book. It's a small right. book. You know, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I mean, uh, funnily, it's 60 pages. And, uh, you know, I, I, I feel that even, you know, bigger books did not uh, provoke me as much as uh, the lessons how, of Icarus How big did. is the book really? How big is the book really? You know, I can we can see this physically 60 pages, but if you read the story and understand what's happening there, this is more like an encyclopedia, you know? Absolutely. And it's the tips, it's only the tips of the iceberg. If this doesn't get you talking with your friends about what this is about, if this doesn't excite you, nothing will. This book is gonna get at the heart of the issue. You get happiness by putting in effort towards the desires that you have for the world, your world, your perspective, your life, all right? I'm not so, saying be narcissistic. It's not about narcissism. It's not about loving yourself above all others or anything like that. It has nothing to do with that or ego. It's not, it's not ego either. It's about harmonizing with the present, the past, and the future. Harmonizing. Find the commonality and the changes that are drifting day by day. And as you modify your dreams and your plans and your efforts, just make sure you check in with your closest friends once in a while. Tell them what you're about. Be willing to get feedback. In fact, I wrote a quote for us, our discussion today. I wrote a quote I thought people might find interesting. It's just a thought, okay? But whenever we engage with another person, we recognize that we have entered a mutually exclusive feedback loop. Either can provide feedback, closing the total loop. If I meet a new person, right? I say, hey, what's your name? His name is Paul. I say, hey, Paul, I'm Randy. Nice to meet you. Right? He could say something nasty. Or he could say something nice. He can say whatever he wants to say. But what right. he says is going to give immediate real feedback to me. It's a feedback loop. I say hi, and he says, bug off. All right? I'm going to make some assumptions about that person and I'm going to listen to his advice and leave him alone. I think you do the same thing and you should. People like that don't, aren't worthy of this world. People like that will only see their own perspective are not worthy of free society. That's the biggest sin you can have. It's not realize the impact that you're having on others and assume that there is no actual impact. There is impact. People who look up to you Right now, in your life, everybody, you, you feel a sense of responsibility to maintain that. And you should. It's all good. I'm just saying, don't let fear be your guide. Learn how to control fear by looking at it from an outside point of view. Like I said, you have to read between the lines. Between the lines, the book says, look at fear from another side. What is it? Okay, it's a protective mechanism. So that we can run away when we get faced with a bear or a gorilla or a crocodile or an alligator, whatever the animal might be that's aggressive and trying to kill you. That's what fear is for. That's the fight or flight. If you see a gorilla come at you, pound his chest and running right at you, doesn't get your blood going, then I don't know what will. <laughs> you know? So... I don't really know where I was going, but great, be, great. Uh, just quick, uh, real quick. How that's do you, another feedback loop, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. That's one. That that's that's that, that's really amazing. That's a, that's a great way uh, way of looking at things. Uh, uh, want to ask you how do, uh, not how do, but uh, I want to ask why. I mean, what prompted you to light, uh, write the lessons of Ikara at some point that, you know it. You, you you finally jotted all the words, you know. You know what gave you that uh, motivation to actually finish the book, get it published. 
uh, when did you feel that you know people should actually i mean i think i asked this again but i wanted to put this uh, in I a different way uh, i wanted I this in a little detail in a little detail i'll give you the truth the truth is this started as a project for me to regain my sense of self that had been missing after my nervous breakdown i lost my sense of self my centeredness to who i am i mean i knew who i was but i was afraid of it so it was just only normal in that scenario so I wrote the book down that explained how I got physically, I mean, the day-by-day -day ritual that got me in trouble. Not ritual, that's not the right word, but the activities that I did at work, no else. I got put in a tight spot at work and then it just made it worse and worse and worse. And finally I let loose and it was bad, right? I fell, I fell. So I wound up two weeks, almost three weeks in the hospital, got back out and I started writing my whole story down and I realized that at the end of the story, I was having this habit of writing what the real lesson was. So I wrote this huge book. It was about 200, 300 pages of what actually happened. And then I took another look at it and I said, that's my truth. But other people, they don't really care about those details. They want to know what I learned out of this. So I wrote a book that was designed for me back when I was 22. I wanted a book it was so simple and clear that I could pass it through a time, reverse time travel, give it back to myself as a kid and read this book. This is what I needed to learn. And that's what I'm saying to others as well. If you want to be happy, you need to apply wisdom to the process or it will destroy you. It's not, it's not a joke. It's none of this stuff is a joke. I'll give you a quote. So this stuff is, needs, to, needs to be taken seriously. I dare do all that may become a man who dares do more is none. That's Shakespeare, that's Macbeth. In today's world, words I mean, I'm sorry, today's words, I will dare to do anything that reflects the limits of my human behavior. Anyone who dares to do more will be destroyed by the results. You are only human, but being human places you among the most amazing creations in the universe. Invest yourself in your destiny. Create the conditions that you desire. Believe and you will find your way. That's the, that's the uh, conclusion of the book. Those words there. That's amazing, uh, uh, Randy, that uh, you have weaved these beautiful words from life experience after your nervous break breakdown. And uh, I think truth... Yeah visited you in a in a in a wonderful way and i think you wanted to convey that rather you channeled uh, you know what was inside uh, you know i think it uh, you call it god or the universe or your inner being or your higher self i think whatever uh, prompted you i think you became a hollow bamboo and the truth flowed through you yes uh, i mean in, in those days you know there when there were manuscripts uh uh, you know, you know, people were writing on papers. Now you are now we are actually typing on laptops or computers. H however, you did that, you channeled it. Uh, I just wanted it took to put me three it in years. Up. It took three years to finish this book. I wrote it again and again and again because what I'm trying to convey is very difficult to convey. I can give you the highlights here, here. I can, I can say, consider this, consider that. But we really need to be able to put the whole picture together to really understand what the message is. And Absolutely. I can tell you what the message is, you know, uh, have you decided what you really want out of life? Have you? Probably not, right? If you have, then your decisions will be uh, sh shielded from negative influences whilst expanding on the opportunities that are presented to you. That's a good quote from the book. That's from the back of the book. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And, um... and decisions directly alter your future because your decisions change your behavior. And behavior affects reality, right? It gets back to that. The we'll, out of the book. we'll go a little deep there as well. Uh, just talk about, you know, how environment influences your life. And, you know, you said that, you know, environment has a great impact on your life. I mean, how many, how many ever great thoughts or talents 
you may possess, but an environment can sabotage a lot if your yeah. environment is not right. And how, how do we have the right kind of environment? Well, you have to create it. It has to be your goal to create the environment that you want for you and your kids and the rest of us, all the rest of us. That's where I'm coming from. So, so is this is the book leaning toward uh, world peace, or is it uh, creating peace in an individual one person at a time? One person at a time, but with a collective understanding that if I meet you and I say hi and smile at you. I'm assuming you're going to smile back and I give you that assumption. I'll give you the first try to mess up. I'll always, always smile and say hi first, unless you say something crazy, you know, and then I'll leave you alone just like you want, obviously, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm always hoping for the best. And I recommend you do the same thing. We must have faith that things will work out. This is not an option. This is a direct quote from the book. This is, we must have faith that things will work out for the best. It, it's a requirement for happiness. Hopelessness. Listen, listen. Hopelessness and unfocused fear are indeed signs of mental illness. Hopelessness, unfocused fear is depression. It's depression. It's a sign of mental illness. If you're plugging your life in with these feelings, you are depressed clinically. Cli clinical depression and anxiety are known to be two sides of the same coin. So if you're anxious and you're depressed, well, now you just live in the best of both worlds, right? You would yes. But yes. it doesn't so, really work that way. You spoke a lot about mental illness, mental health. You had a you were almost at the verge of a nervous breakdown. You were hospitalized. Yeah, well, actually and, that is the, and that is a condition of everybody right now. Uh, yeah. You know, especially, especially after the pandemic, a great amount, uh, you know, rather enormous amounts of fear have seeped into everybody, you know, what will happen to them. Yes. Initially, when the pandemic, uh, you know, yes. it uh, occurred rather, uh, it came to the world. And uh, and they said that it is not a fear of uh, the virus, but it is the fear of fear itself. It is an epidemic yeah. or a pandemic of fear now. That means fear is you know ruling. Fear, the, fear is ruling everyone's life in some form or the other. People is people are having FOMO and you know all these different fears, right? Like fear of missing out and fear of uh, you know missing out in life. Fear of not achieving their goals. I mean, people are. Berserk and people are everywhere. Yeah, and, the and, is and mental health is paramount. So, I mean, your words to you know, towards the cure, towards you know, solving this epidemic of anxiety and depression. How how do I mean? Again, I'm going back to that question. How do you come back to that desired state of mind, that coveted state, which people? I mean, I, I mean, I know people. Uh, you know, one in, you know, 10, uh, you know, seven out of 10 people. Uh, I mean, I know that they have, they are, they have their own anxieties, fears, insecurities, oh, sometimes no. stricken by jealousy and all the low vibrational oh, no. feelings. You know, what's, you know, how do you contract them? You know, the end, people want an end to all these things, live the way they want to the way you said the desired state, like the Zen masters, Zen people, or the Japanese yes. people, create the physical environment to achieve that state of mind. But and what is the state of mind? Alertness without anxiety. This one? Anxiety. I, I read what the what book. I, I read the book. That only a proposal, right? My proposal: what you should do in your life. I'm telling you, you define happiness. So that's square one. It's yours. But look at what my definition of it is. That's what I'm saying. Look at it. Be, be willing to look at it. True, true, true. Uh, so we will go back uh, to basics. Uh, what is the book to do with Icarus? And how did you get inspired by Icarus? I told you the book is a warning. All right. What happened with me was... My mental illness affected my life in a way 
that causes cause things to become harried and accelerated and negative feedback loops from every direction, if you can understand what I'm saying there. Negative feedback loops have become my life. The book practically opens with a statement that my life had gradually descended into a living hell. Really. Icarus is the Greek mythology person who was on an island with his father. And they couldn't get off the island. They'd been trapped there or, or lost there or whatever. The father was smart. They had candles and the father was smart. He said, we're going to gather up these feathers from the beach, all the gold feathers, right? We're going to gather them all together. They were going to glue the, the wings on our arms so that we can fly off the island. That's the plan. The father said, two rules, Icarus, two rules. Don't fly too low. There's people who don't know about this part sometimes. If you fly low, your wings are going to touch the water and it's going to pull you in and you'll never get back up. Don't fly too high or you'll get burned by the sun and it's going to melt the feathers, melt the wax, and you'll have no wings left and you're going to fall into the sea. That's the story of Icarus. Now, how it relates to my life and then the, the, the picture of the book of a seagull not getting burned by the sun, but soaring through the sky happily is my state of mind I'm trying to achieve. That's what that image is. Icarus flies. Icarus flies. And uses strategy to stay up there. So do you think there is so an Icarus in all of us? I'm giving you the strategy that I learned to fly like an eagle or a seagull in this case. Fly through your life that way, maximizing opportunities, maximizing happiness, maximizing flexibility, maximizing good feedback with your harmony, harmony with your environment, harmonize with your life, harmony everywhere for you and for them. Don't look for others to train you to do this. That's what my book is for, is to train you to do this. Other people aren't going to tell you to do this, right? I'm telling you, give people the advantage of trying to do a good job by you. Don't look at people suspiciously and say, I don't like the color of his skin. I don't like the haircut. All right, go for it. If you think that's important and you really want to live your life that way, go for it. I'm asking for better. I'm saying you can live better than that. You can look at each person for what their value is. And we all inherently have value. Each and every last one of us. We're inherently valuable. So we cannot ever take that away from people, from their individual rights. Those are important, right? So all this business about, you know, bigotry and, anxiety and hatred and fear, again, fear, 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 are causing the political winds to get crazy. We've all seen it. People are losing their minds or have already lost their minds. Actually, that's probably a better way to put it. Now, I'm not going to cast aspersions in any one direction, but I think many people will know what I'm talking who, in the future, who, will who, will who. provide feedback. The historians uh, will provide feedback absolutely. during this time. You know, after you know, after uh, <clears throat> you know, after I've learned the success principles, rather, after I read a lot of places to achieve your dreams, manifest your dreams. You know, yeah. um, I, I mean, there are umpteen number of uh, things about <laughs> them. You, you visualize your dream. You actualize your dream. You actually become passionate about it, excited about it. You, you actually try to achieve something in the future. And I call it investing in your destiny. All right, you have you have faith. All right, faith is what's going to happen to you. Faith is your future, unless you change it. All right, faith means you're not trying to change the future. Faith means you're doing what you've always done because you were raised in India, you had this kind of family, you had this kind of illness when you were a kid, and you have these psychological problems. Yeah, I could go on and on and on and on, right? <laughs> but, um, I forget what I was going to say, I'm sorry. Uh, are, we, uh, are we getting a quote from you? That wasn't a quote, that was just, that was freehand. I forget great. where I was at. Great, great, great. Uh, no, what I'm uh, coming back to squarely is, you know, I, I mean, I feel those cozy days where friends met each other, you know, had cups of coffee with each other, used to visit, you know, make phone calls for no reason. Had just Why call. not? 
for hours and hours uh, yeah. with no goal as such to achieve anything yet maybe, maybe they had that desired state of mind uh, or or, you don't need or as, if, as, they lived, as if their life was sorted and i see everywhere now i mean i know that everyone is trying to provide a solution for a uh, lot of problems in the world be it uber or be it uh, airbnb or be it any other company there anything uh, that is creative in the world be it art or be it um, a movie as such you know people want to entertain the world people want to make others happy uh, yeah. and especially the entertainment world i see that you know you know i see the same life the coveted life people wanted to live you know hanging with friends being happy and things i mean i i felt the yester years the yester days was less burdened with too much of ambition you know what i'm saying right right uh, but i'm trying to tell you that your ambition is all messed up that's the problem you don't know what to expect because you're not expecting the good things to happen i guarantee it you know why i know that because it hasn't happened it hasn't happened yet it will happen when you apply the energy to make it happen right right because somewhere i was i read that you approach either uh you find truth through meditation or you find truth through happiness uh and someone said that the the former than latter the latter is sweeter uh than the former because you know you know happiness can open doors and portals and windows and uh can open a whole world unto itself the sky becomes the limit yet uh you are fulfilled where you are uh you know i i'm trying to uh, you understand it's difficult uh i i'm trying to make a point uh that are we seeking you know in the desirable state of mind are we seeking uh you know you know that state where you know buddha calls it nirvana or yeah. uh, you know laozu calls it i think he calls it tao the thing that flows and um, you know a lot of other mystics call it enlightenment uh, yes is that what uh, your your book is pointed toward yeah no doubt about it this if you understand the purpose of this book you will understand why i wrote it if you read it you'll understand why i wrote it and it's not to help me it's to help you All right. If I told but, you, if I was a millionaire, but, but if I was this, a millionaire, I would give the book away. I really, really would, because I want people to read it, because I want them to learn my lesson, so they can be happy. That's what I want. That's all I'm after here, and I'll be willing to talk about the book to the end of time, because I spent three years on it, and I believe in it, and now you believe in it too, Shreya. I can tell. Absolutely, absolutely. And tell I, me, do, I, I do, I do, I do, and, and I, I have internalized it, and I'm going to read it more. uh totally and deeply i feel that you know a lot of uh, answers are hidden um, uh, uh, are embedded between the, in, lines. between the lines there's a there are there is a lot to uh expect encompass. from it yeah there's a lot to encompass i don't i haven't had anyone i had one person tell me it was a fast read and he only read it twice or once but that was only one person i've ever given this to and i've given it to hundreds of hundreds of people I haven't sold any of them because I never tried. I just wanted to know that it was a good enough book to stand on its own, and I've proven that. I I was under the false assumption that if it's a good book, it will sell itself. I was under that assumption, and so I made it as good as I could. And I said, "Here it is. I'm willing to take feedback and change it if I need to." And I did that for years and years and years. And nothing happened. So it's it's not a brand new book. I wrote this about eleven, twelve years ago, but I haven't really tried to market it. This is really the first time I've come out to the. public and said this is something that i really feel you should read and i do mean that i i want you to have the lessons that i learned to protect you in the future and to protect your happiness and those are the right yeah. words amazing 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 uh so uh we are almost at the end of the show before that i want to i want you to you know and after that i'll ask you to actually give something from the book so that you know they can actually uh, that can trigger them and uh, you know provoke them to read 
uh, we have we, we spoke a bit about it, but uh, I I want to talk a, a little bit about those five lessons also, and uh, how do they read it? Is there a specific way to read? I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask that question also. But before that, you mentioned something. We spoke about two things. I want to talk. We spoke about the desired state of mind. We spoke about anxiety and stress and tension and fear as such uh, surprising I mean I, I wanted to you know go in different places but you actually you know explained everything uh, in your own way so I need not ask those questions so I prepared few questions and I wanted to but it didn't go that way you know I, it went uh, like a flow it was like a flux which happened and uh, uh, as it should be any uh, any uh, real discussion any authentic discussion takes its own course uh, and I'm happy about that. Just wanted to ask you two things because on one side, people are really looking at self-actualization. Uh, that is, they really want to know who they are. Who they can be. They are seeking spiritual help. They are going to different masters. They are going to, uh, they are actually following and practicing different modalities like meditation and and oh, breath work and you know and energy work and and all that and on the other side the thing which is b boiling in everybody's mind is achieving their dreams a lot of people have different ideas about success of fame and uh, you know actualizing their potential i think there was there is some there is somewhere in your book called latent Pot potentiality. Potential. Uh, potentiality. That's an important yes. concept. So... Do you want to go over that real quick? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Potentiality refers to the fact that something may happen in the future. That's all it means. Potentiality means something might happen. So we say to ourselves, what are the things that might happen in the future? Well, that's quite a big list, isn't it? Right? But you could look at some specific things and say what might happen in the future. And you say, I recognize my vision, my vision of my, uh, my goals, I recognize that and I can see it when I'm in the right state of mind. So potentiality means you can collapse, and that's the right word now, collapse the possibilities to go in your direction by simply observing it repeatedly and with clarity. If you can see an outcome, if you can visualize the outcome because you're in the right state of mind, alertness without anxiety, you can see the potentials that are out there that could happen. You'll see it clearly. And the only question left is what kind of plans do you need to make to get there? And you're going to create those plans. You're going to follow them step by step, day by day. And I promise you it won't be done in a week. You have to keep doing it. But you keep doing it day by day by day and that is how you live a happy life because you know what you can do and you know that you're going to need to take accountability for it that's the most important thing to remember if you harm someone else that's going to come back to you and if you don't know that i feel sorry for you right that's the nature of what we're talking about here this is about human interaction the observer effect has many technical scientific reasons behind it but it also applies to people. When we pull up to an intersection, right? And there's this red light, green light, all that. And we see a police officer is on the other direction coming towards you. You're not going to run through that red light when you see that police officer, right? That's the observer effect. They're changing your behavior by your own expectation of the future. See what's happening there? Right. They're so altering you your behavior. You're letting them alter your behavior. You're letting them drive you by not crossing through that intersection. They're in Amazing. control, not you. Amazing. I'm Amazing. not saying it would be smart. I'm not saying it's smart to blast through the inter inter or intersection. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is all the other conundrums in your life where you can make a statement, you can make a stand, go for it. That's what I'm saying. So, so are Just we not, like. You're going to be visible to others. That's what I'm saying. This is a visible, interactive process we're talking about with people that you care about. People you work with, right? We're looking for harmony. Look for harmony. When you find it, you'll see what you can do. And that only feeds back more happiness into the loop. Feedback loop. 
Create the conditions you want. Create the conditions that will make you behave in a way that will bring about your desired state of mind. That's it. Sure. Is, Create the conditions uh, that are going to make you happy. It's going to okay. drive you to do the right behavior to change other people's expectations. This is what it really comes down to in part two of the book. Is sure you can say, all right, now I'm visualizing my where I want to be and I'm happy now. Say, okay, Randy, your book worked. And I said, well, you haven't read the good part yet. The good part is there's no limits to this. There's time as a factor, but there is no limit. If you can visualize it, you've probably heard this before, but it's true. If you can visualize doing it, you can piece together the pieces in your mind. You can indeed do it. Okay. Only, only issues are, what if something happens that I didn't expect? Right? Is it a travesty? No. No. It means you need to modify your dream. If something happens that's, that's devastating or superior, it could be great news. Maybe you want to change your goals to something even higher. But so, be willing to. Be so willing what you're saying to. is you have a control over your luck or your destiny. destiny. You, I mean, I, I, I saw destiny. that there is a, uh, uh, I think you defined fate. Uh, I think it is your, I think. Uh, An unexamined you say? destiny. An unexamined destiny. An unexamined destiny. So, uh, I mean, what do you mean by that? Well, fate means that you're going to do, I mean, tried to answer this before. It's a hard, hard concept. Fate means you're going to behave the way that you always have behaved because you are who you are. Right? Sharat is Sharat. He's got this background, that background, this experience. We know that Sharat's going to behave like who? Sharat. Right? But if you can change your behavior to make other people expect more from you, now their expectations are pulling you forward, all right? It's not the cop at the intersection you're afraid of. What you need to do is get other people to expect the best from you. Why would they expect the best from you? Because you're behaving that way, all right? If your behavior goes that way, so will the modification of their expectations. If you, this is deep. This is deep. As you go forward, making harmony in your life, other people will say, hey, Randy, how you doing? Are you bringing some harmony into my day? You always you know, do. I, you know, I think the this is where I, you know, I keep listening to Abraham Hicks, which who says that your feelings and emotions are directly proportional to what circumstances you attract in life. I mean, I mean, it is it is a little difficult to uh, really imbibe it because we are in a world where everybody, most of them, but now I think everyone have softened up and started to uh, subscribe to the ideas of uh, uh, the world being a mirror. I mean, you change yourself, you, your environment changes. I think you, re you wrote somewhere in your book that this world is a hall of mirrors, I guess. Right? I mean, I love that poetic way of uh, putting it. I think well, that's, that was interesting because that's when I was at the peak of my uh, negative feedback loop. Uh, it was a very global negative feedback loop. And it was, uh, the way I describe it was that I had my own expectations of what was going to happen in the future and all the people around me. But what happened is I was so good at it. Now, this is a caution now. I was so good at doing this stuff, okay? So good at it that it got a life of its own. It took, my environment became alive. I don't know if you can understand what that means. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, it had a mind I, of its I, own. I totally get you because uh, I'm, I'm a person who believes that inanimate objects, like even those who are just lying on your desk and things, they have life. And, uh, and I, I read somewhere that authors, uh, those who write novels, right? Those who write stories, you know, be it Robinson Crusoe or, uh, you know the story of Mark Twain, the story of like the Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, or mm -hmm. any great story in the world, like the yeah. Beauty and the Beast, or is it any Disney story or anybody? Uh, but but let's talk a little bit about uh, the yesteryear authors. I somebody was mentioning me that uh, you know these people for them the characters become real, and who knows that the characters are real. Only in your physical world where nothing is, you know, everything only, you know, whatever is rigid, you know, everything is rigid and 
you know. Uh, yeah, what about if you get famous though? There's a good question. What if you get famous for being the good guy? Could that happen? Uh, come again? Now, let me ask you a serious question. If you applied these lessons in your life, I'm asking you, Sheriff, okay? Do you might think you might get famous from it? Absolutely. Absolutely. If, I, if I get that desired, desired, desirable state of mind. and Yeah, you can be a happy, happy person, but it won't be because of the fame. I'm telling you, you'll be happy, but the fame is in a happy place. They, they say it is, they pretend it is, but it really, talk about the cop at the intersection who's ruling your life. Talk about having other people's expectations control your behavior, right? You're famous. You're totally under control of other people's expectations. If that's fame. Like, 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 so you'll become like a public property, I guess. I'm just... You become a puppet. And you smile when the camera says to smile. That's not happiness, my friend. That's not it. Fame is fleeting. I mean, there's a great song by Kansas, the rock group. It says, all we are is dust in the wind. You know, if you look at our time scales on the right magnitude, our entire experience on this world is only going back 7 million years. We figure the universe is 14 billion years old. How much time has elapsed to bring about someone like you? How much evolution, how much apparent effort went into creating something as magnificent as a human being, uh, a lot of amazing time, creation in the universe. A we lot of times, most amazing. A lot of times, I feel that uh, fame came to people post uh, posthumous because you know people were really focused on their goal and never expected anything from the world. But after their death, I think you know, yeah. you know, they went. I mean, maybe. Maybe a yeah, century yeah. after their death, maybe they became famous or things, you know. Yeah. I mean, or and, people and that, had, well. that had nothing to do uh, for them. I mean, they were not re really looking at fame or anything as such. I think that's true. I think what happens is fame comes to those who deserve it, right? But it becomes its own endless self-fulfilling prophecy. Endless loop over and over again. Smile because the camera says to sell this product, appear in this film, I saw something really funny about, uh, oh, what's that, the singer, she said, uh, do you know the words to my song? And all the audience was going, yeah. She's like, prove it. <laughs> I thought that was great. Um, great. You know, uh, I know we're at the end of the show, but, uh, but I feel we are in a world where uh, there are two sections of people, those who are happy, who are happy by themselves and not seemingly happy, and there there is a section where even these people ha, are uh, covert them who have actually become famous in the eye of the public, from the, uh, in the eye of the audience. But I think we have to come to terms with what uh, really happiness is, what we are seeking, and we are living in such an uncertain. Uh, we we're, 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 we're living in great uncertainties these days, and a lot of unknowns in the present world. And uh, and and I, I definitely feel the lessons of Icarus can uh, uh, decode or demystify a lot of those uh, elusive mysteries in people. So, Randy, we are at uh, the end of our discussion. Thank you so much uh, you. for answering some lovely questions and talking a lot about your book, what is in it, the treasure trove it is. And uh, <clears throat> uh, a great, we are in a world where uh, we are, you know, the, uh, we're split into two halves, I guess. Of course, there are a lot of uh, divisions, but I'm, I'm in a world where we are in showbiz, so I, I can clearly see two worlds where people, they earn their lives, they are, they have a family, they run their lives, they uh, follow uh, their dreams or they, they pursue things, but they don't become famous yet. They are, they are or not happy, and there are people who by serendipity or luck, I, maybe the universe have chosen them. I, I was reading somewhere that uh, the universe have chosen some of the famous personalities to help the world at large, but they have become, but they have become the epitome of uh, success for a lot of other people who are actually worshiping these, uh, these so-called idols. Uh, I don't know. I may who, be wrong. Are you talking about Martin Luther King? 
You're talking about Martin Luther King and Gandhi? Is that what you're describing? There are people like that. People who become famous and powerful at the same time. And they handled it just fine. I'm saying if you're in the right state of mind, you can handle fame. But remember, it's going to be gone. It's not permanent. It's a, it's a so these, these dichotomies, I, I feel that uh, if we delve a little more deeply into the lessons of Icarus, uh, we can get some amazing answers. And I feel that uh, any act when done with totality, I feel it blossoms into something beautiful. So now let's conclude our show uh, with uh, your lessons. I I want at, at, at least tell our audience at least one or two of your lessons for them to ponder. And uh, I want you to whet their appetite to read the book actually. And uh, say your closing words about the lessons of Icarus and, uh, and, and, and a little bit about also, uh, I want you to just, uh, you know, uh, give a precursor about your upcoming book, The, the Doors of Possibility. Sure. Um, did you want to look at any one last, is that it? Any specific lesson? All right, lesson number three is probably the most important one. Um, just trying to find it here in the book. Lesson three or lesson four. I'm trying to think here. Well, lesson three is about uh, maintaining a perspective uh, over time, maintaining a vision that's consistent, as consistent as you can have it. If you visualize it, it becomes a catalyst for that process to happen. It's like a catalyst is a chemical that you add to another chemical and it might make a third thing happen. Catalyst enables for other changes to happen. And I'm saying that that's what your feedback loop with your life can become is a catalyst to bring about the desired change once you're happy once you're there it doesn't matter if you get fame or not you won't care you can get it that's great have fun with it it could be a lot of fun do what you want enjoy it but don't do it because other people expect you to do it that's the need that's the important thing don't do things because other people expect you to do them unless you're the one to put them in their heads those, those, those ideas. For me as a young man, I had the right intuition to say, if I go to class and at the first three classes of the year, I stick my hand up all the time, I know that I'm gonna be on the ball for the rest of the course. I was smart enough as a young man to do that because I knew he would come back and count on me again and again. And I was gonna to have to stay on top of that course. I set the teacher's expectations for me to behold, behave in a superior way. I what? encouraged him to expect me to do a good job. And that's what it's all about. Great, great. So can we delve a little? Uh, can, you, can you say your closing words about uh, the lessons of Icarus and uh, the pursuit of happiness? You know, can you generalize it? For, you know, just tell them, you know, why they should actually read the book and the this different book, implications they will have. Yes, I, I understand. It's a difficult question to answer. This book will give you the path to your own definition of happiness. It will give you the path to get there. It will give you step-by-step -step instructions. Again, there's things that it won't do. It won't define your happiness for you. And it says, don't let anybody else do that either. It's your happiness we're talking about. You need to recognize that. Uh, that's really the main, most important thing to think about is maintain your own set of expectations of the future. Don't let other people monkey around with that. It's too important, right? At your job, you might have to do that, right? Your boss says, do this. You say, okay, boss, you know, or jump through the hoop. And you say, okay, how high? All those things, right? You might have to do that at work, but not in your life. In your life, you're in control and you maintain the expectations that you want to see get fulfilled. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You maintain Absolutely. the expectations and you look for the opportunities so you can leverage them at the right time and there's that time element again. So you leverage your opportunities to bring about more desirable frame of mind. Alertness without anxiety, in my opinion. Great, 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 great discussion, uh, uh, Randy. I've enjoyed it. Because I, I as well enjoyed it. I learned a lot uh, from you. It was a, good, it was a fun discussion, uh, rather in a podcast style. Uh, both like it was both like an interview and a podcast together 
um, and uh, and I wish you know we'll do more uh, discussions this uh, like this, uh, but we are almost at the uh, end of this show, and okay. and I have to conclude. But uh, uh, really, it's an honor and a privilege to have you in my show. Talk okay. about the lessons of Icarus and the pursuit of happiness, okay. and uh, and as well, friends, uh, we we are expecting a new book from as well, uh, the doors to possibility. And yes. uh, uh, he's he's going to come in another show to talk about those two possibility and talk about more. We'll find out is it a sequel to the lessons of Icarus or is it another uh, kind of a genre? Uh, it will be a surprise for all of you. But I want everybody to go and read, pick up uh, this wonderful book called The Lessons of Icarus and the Pursuit of Hello, Happiness. Man. And the link is scrolling on the screen for you to go ahead and uh, uh, purchase this and give us your valuable feedback um, in the comment section, how you felt it, uh, how emotional you became, what kind of lessons uh, became your favorite lessons. You know, my favorite lesson is number one, which is you must choose to work within the flow of time, stand in the way of events at your own peril, which is a great warning. Uh, and the other lessons are great as well, but uh, in totality, the book is a great read, a must read uh, for everybody seeking happiness, uh, success in its real sense, truth, and uh, truth. absolutely real the the the, the, real the real tenet, the real tenet as such is truth. So so to really find out your truth, I feel that this book can become a wonderful portal to reveal great mysteries of the world, of your life, of your universe, of uh, the multiverses as such. I know this book uh, will trigger you, will prod you in in uh, so many dimensions. It will open up many, many more dimensions of your life. Uh, it is not a single read. It is a multiple read book where you read it multiple times at different truths, reveal at different times, even when you're not reading the book. Once you read the book, the book is not going to leave you. The book will stay with you. The book stays in your heart. And the different truths come, you know, when uh, you're in a relaxed state of mind, when you need answers for all the puzzles of your life. And uh, that that's how I want to conclude. And uh, uh, go ahead and uh, pick up your copy of The Lessons of Icarus and the Pursuit of Happiness. I'm your favorite host, Sharad, and we'll find out more about William R. Fowler III's next book, The Doors to Possibility. Until then, have a wonderful day ahead.